Hey guys, it's Jasmine. And originally this was supposed to be all part of one video, but I actually had to split it into three. Don't worry, I'm gonna link all three videos that cover all of the fragrances that the House of Fleur does create and make. I'll put links to all those videos with all the reviews in the description below. So here is part two covering some more of Fleur's fragrances. All right, guys, the next one I'm going to choose to tell you about is Olmsted and Vaux. The notes of Olmsted and Vaux are shiso leaf, white ginger, orange flower, and mate. Here's a little sample. Let's spritz it on here. Okay, first spray is typical male cologne. It's very, very fresh. I think it's definitely that orange flower and, and ginger. Very, very much like this picture depicts. This is one of the ones where I'm like, the picture is is perfect, especially as it begins to dry down. So I would say five minutes in, it reminds me of a fresh detergent, but in a good way. So not a super chemical, just like average way, but this reminds me of a fresh detergent with the name, something like brisk rapid waters. I wouldn't describe this as, as earthy, even though you might think so from the notes, it turns into what I can only describe is a masculine aquatic baby powder. If I was to be sitting on the steps of, of some kind of a big city hall, maybe in DC or something, I'm sitting on the steps, eating my lunch, eating a soft pretzel, and there's all kinds of people walking by, and then there's a lull in, in the traffic of pedestrians. And this one guy walks by, early 30s, he's an accountant, he's wearing his slacks, probably some kind of dark gray color, white button-up shirt, no jacket. His tie is some kind of probably like a blue. And it's kind of, you can tell he's stressed out. His tie's all messed up. I get a whiff of mix of his antiperspirant with the laundered smell of his pants. He's chewing gum. So maybe he's talking on the phone. So I get a whiff of his minty gum, his pants, his detergent, his his deodorant that he's wearing in this outfit, sitting on those courthouse steps. And that is what Olmsted and Vaux smells like. That accountant, early 30s, stressed out, typical guy haircut, probably the same haircut he's had since he was like in elementary school, but it's okay. He's not very into the aesthetic. He's into business and his dream is to work on Wall Street. Although I say this is masculine or it leans more towards masculine, I think this could also fall into the edge of that unisex spectrum. Again, it's all subjective. So if that sounds like something that you would like, even as a female, I mean, go for it. Throw this into your samples and see what you think. Okay, and the next floor fragrance that we are going to talk about today is Sandara. This is actually the one I ended up purchasing in the bottle. So this is the 50 milliliter size of the bottle. And I love magnetized tops. It's heavy. You can tell it It has some weight to it. Perfectly minimalist. Very, very nice. All of their bottles look like this and they just have the name of the fragrance if you can see. Sandara is what I purchased because to me, it was the most unique, the most interesting, the most different. This has turned into my go-to rainy summer day fragrance. And you can see by the picture, a lot of ferns. You probably picture a lot of humidity, a lot of moisture, kind of a wet forest thing. So the notes of Sandara are forest air, violet leaves, Timor pepper, and sandalwood. If you like Velvet Orchid by Tom Ford, then you will love this. The first thing that I thought of when I smelt this was that the movie Fern Gully, and I don't know if that's aging me or if you guys remember that movie. It was an, an animated cartoon movie. I think it was the early 90s, but it was about Fern Gully in the rainforest. Other movies I think of when I think of this are, oddly enough, Nell. Perhaps Nell would have smelt of Sandara. You can tell it's kind of like a, an earthy forest vibe, and this is very earthy. So if Aura by Thierry Mugler was fern gully, but more of a, a fern gully themed rave, then Sandara is the actual rainforest in real life that the movie Fern Gully was based off of. It's just so different. And the weird thing is I wore this one time and I got this 
this strong scent of dill in the fragrance. Only one time has that ever happened, and I don't know if it was combined with my cycle, because if you didn't know, if you are a woman, then certain fragrances can smell a little bit differently on you, depending where you are in your cycle. So I don't know what the reason was, but there was one time when I wore this and I almost, it was almost off putting to me because I was like, why do I smell like a pickle right now? But it never happened again. This smells like fresh ferns, just like the picture, except it has an enigmatic feel to it. It's wet, fresh ferns in a wet forest. It's slightly, slightly musky, but not in, in the same kind of white musk way as Hanami. And after an hour or two, this melts into your skin as, as kind of a woodsy amber. And this does last seven to nine hours on my skin, which again, very, very long time and worth noting, especially if you live in a tropical kind of humid climate. Now, I will say this is atypical. It might be hard for some people to understand, especially if you're a heavy sprayer, but somehow the earthiness of it and the unique spice, which I'm guessing is from that Timor pepper, it makes it feel familiar while also having it be kind of complex. I really think the more, the more I smell it, and even when I wear it on myself, that that Timor pepper is what makes it unique because you don't see that specific note in very many fragrances. I could picture a wide range of people wearing this. I could picture Nell wearing it, apparently. I could picture a really successful artist or creative wearing this. I could picture a librarian wearing this. Somebody earthy, but somebody with a little edge. Somebody who has the confidence to wear a fragrance that maybe isn't the easiest to understand, but who's into those kind of woody, earthy, slightly, slightly spicy, maybe a little bit of a wetness to the fragrance. Like I said, this is my go-to fragrance for some reason when it's rainy and wet and humid outside, like hurricane season in Florida, which means I wore it a lot. And I would get quite a few compliments on it. And it was always the type of thing where you could tell the person was like, what is that? That, that smells good. It's different. You would get a lot of, it's different because it is. It's very, very unique. So if you want this kind of earthy, cozy, wet forest, slight bit of spiciness, complex, but also comforting at the same time, if that sounds appealing to you, then you might want to try Sandara in your samples. Next fragrance we are going to venture into is Moab. Ooh, this smell, you guys, this smells exactly like the picture like a desert, hot day, spicy, cinnamon. Is there cinnamon? Let's look at the notes. Notes for Moab are long pepper, clove, vanilla, jasmine, and tonka bean. The clove in this is serious. To me, this smells, I mean, cloves, straight cloves. First spray, very similar to Old Spice with less of an alcohol type undertone. And that again, must be that spiciness of the clove. It's very dry, spicy. So like I was just talking about Sandara is more of like a wet forest. This is the complete opposite of Sandara, but with the same kind of complexity and strength to it, because this is a strong fragrance. I say this is kind of right in the middle of unisex. It could be very masculine. Uh, it could be worn by a female successfully and smell delicious. But when I smell this, I sense just little black peppercorns left out on a cedar plank in the hot Arizona sun, baking away. It settles into more of a warm clove after time and the longevity on this. This lasted over eight to nine hours on my skin. And I will say that it lasted so long that I almost got really tired of it and wanted to scrub it off. It almost became a scrubber. Overall, Moab is hot, dry, spicy, a lot of clove in there, a lot of pepper. And then as it develops and warms into my skin, at least, it gets slightly sweeter, it's very slightly. And that's probably the vanilla popping in as well as the tonka bean but by no means would I describe this as a sweet fragrance. Spicy is the word for this fragrance. It's rich, it's got a lot of personality to it, but it's not something I would describe as heavy. This smells kind of like hot cinnamon spice tea, if you've ever had that from Harney and Sons, or those fireball candies, if you added a big boost of clove in there and then like minimized the cinnamon factor. So if you know someone that's a big fan of Old Spice, 
or Spice Bomb by Victor and Ralph. This might be a great new fragrance to add to their arsenal, perhaps as a gift or for yourself. I definitely don't smell this on somebody younger than maybe mid to late 20s. I feel like that kind of confidence and maturity in general would not really pass as authentically if someone too young was to wear a fragrance like this. As for seasons or climate, I think that this might be overpowering in the summer, but in a way it might also work if someone was to do a light-handed spray. Because again, if you were to look at this, it is based on a hot desert and it is a hot and dry fragrance. So if that sounds like something that's up your alley, then Moab might be a pick for you in your samples. Next fragrance from Fleur we are going to talk about is Heptat. And this one, I also happened to borrow the bottle from somebody I know who I recommended this to. You guys, this fragrance. This is the most masculine fragrance in the line of fragrances from Fleur. I mean, just look at this picture. What is this, a wood shop? The notes in Hepcat are saffron, black vetiver, tobacco, and oud. If you know anything about those notes, then you can probably already imagine how delicious this is. When I smell this fragrance, I think of a guy in his late 20s to mid to late 40s. He's wearing some brown leather lace-up boots that have that kind of scuffed, worn-off look, and, and you really can't tell if he purchased them, probably way overpriced, already looking like that, or if he's actually worked in those boots. Jeans on, well-fitting jeans with a button-up plaid shirt, but not like a lumberjack plaid, more like a kind of hipster, very form-fitting, good plaid. He's in good shape, good physique under there, good chest, good shoulders, strong arms, strong forearms, and you can tell because his button-up is rolled up to the elbows. Strong-looking hands. He definitely is not clean-shaven. He, eh, he could be, but he has some scruff, or a very well-prepped beard working on him. You're sitting in a coffee shop, he walks in, he might be wearing his crossover messenger bag, but he's not pretentious. He's not one of those like hipster city kids that's just trying to look kind of cool and stylish, but he's actually really into woodwork, really into vinyl. Maybe he's stopping in that coffee shop on his way to the record store to pick up some new vinyl to listen to with his really cool boomer mom. The vetiver in here, I love vetiver, so that note in itself is just so cozy, so warm. And in a weird way, I get maple syrup. So it's almost like if this dude was to walk in, and let's say you were friends with him, and you knew him, and you gave him a hug and a kiss on the cheek, and he happened to have breakfast at his favorite diner that morning and had some pancakes and maple syrup and just had the remnants of the maple syrup lingering on his beard and you got a whiff of that as you gave him that kiss on the cheek and backed away. This guy to me listens to good music. He might be on his way to the record store to pick up some new vinyl by Lou Reed or, or Johnny Cash. It, it's also like he somehow fell into a pile of wood chips before walking into that coffee shop. He's cultured, he's educated, and he values hard work and fair people. You know, in all honesty, this is the type of fragrance that can take a guy who might be a five or a six up to a solid eight, but it caps at that eight. So if he's a seven, eight. If he's already an eight, then like a serious eight. If you can't tell, I really like this fragrance. I'm a big fan of it. It is something that I have tried to wear myself and it just, it just, that's too masculine for, in my opinion, for, for me to pull off, but I don't know, maybe somebody else can. This is also a great everyday fragrance, I believe, for a man. So it's not inappropriate for the office. If it's a manual labor job, then it'd be great because <laughs> you never expect those guys to smell particularly good when they're coming in to do like plumbing or electrician work or anything like that. So if one was to and smell like that, that would be lovely. I think this could work in the summer, in the winter, day or night. It's really all encompassing and it's very, very well done. It's not offensive. It lasts over 10 hours on my skin and on anyone else I've smelt it on. It also lasts all day long. And if I had to put a character to this fragrance, I would have to say a younger 
Nick Offerman, or no, no, if Aiden from Sex in the City was to wear any fragrance, he would wear Hepcat, period. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to click the thumbs up if you did to let me know below which one sounds best to you. And if you end up ordering any, I will leave a link in the description and the pinned comments. Again, I'm not affiliated with them at all. That's just something that they give all customers to share with their friends. And we're a family here at Cat Lady Fitness. So I am sharing that with you. Also, please leave me any requests for a fragrance review that you may want in the future, whether it's a specific single fragrance, which would be great because that would be a fast video to make or suggestions of other ones you may like based on your current favorite fragrance or gift giving ideas or whatever it may be. Of course, go ahead and click that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon below if you want to become a part of the Cat Lady Fitness family because we do put out videos every cat or day, which are often pertaining to cat stuff, kitty nutrition, cat care, as well as things for humans like workouts, uh, stress management tips, and whatever I feel like posting. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure to like our page, Cat Lady Fitness. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and for sticking with me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.